In this video, we're going to test the uh, image recognition capabilities of the Cloud 3.5 Sonnet model. Specifically, we'll try to find out if we can use it for automated web UI testing. Anthropic released this new model on June 20th, just two days ago, and they posted this lengthy release notes on it. Um, yeah, just lots of interesting information here about the results of their tests. But the part that I'm mostly interested in is this one, state of the art vision. So they claim here that this new Cloud 3.5 Sonnet is our strongest vision model yet, surpassing Cloud 3 Opus on standard vision benchmarks. Um, these step change improvements are most noticeable for tasks that require visual reasoning, like interpreting charts and graphs. This sounds pretty exciting because for the web UI testing, this is exactly what we need. We need the model to be able to interpret those graphs and charts and other UI elements. So that sounds very encouraging. Uh, let's try to see how that's going to work. So here is the screenshot of the application that we're going to use. And it's exactly the same screenshot that I used uh, a week ago when I made my video uh, comparing the GPT-40 and GPT-4 Turbo. Uh, vision capabilities. We are also going to use exactly the same prompt as I used last time. So here it is. First part is the system prompt. So that one, and we say that you are an expert at testing user interface of web applications. You will be provided with a screenshot of a web application interface. Analyze the attached screenshot very carefully because you will be asked very detailed questions about it. Then for the user part, uh, we put this. The attached picture is a screenshot of a web application that you are testing. You need to make sure that the conditions listed in the below conditions tag are met. If all conditions are met precisely as expected, answer with only the text test passed and do not output any other text. If even one of the conditions is not met, explain the mismatch. And here we have the parts where we list all the conditions. So let's take a look at each one, one by one now. First one is at the top left, IRM organizations text is displayed prominently. So we can see it on the screenshot where that is. Then the next one is in the activity date range section, the word include is highlighted with a blue color. So you can see that this is not correct and that's on purpose because we want to make sure that uh, the Phi tree will actually be able to notice that this condition is not met with this screenshot. So we're doing this on purpose. And there is an icon of a question mark right next to the activity date range text. And there is no question mark icon next to the select activity date range. So that's also a little bit tricky, but those are two correct. And we'll see if it can, uh, if it can figure out those conditions. To conduct our tests, we're going to use the workbench provided by Antrophic. This is the website. And I will first populate it with all the uh, information needed to execute our prompt. So first of all, I'm just going to copy and paste that system prompt that we looked at previously for the user prompt. We're going to uh, also copy that, including the conditions. So that goes here. And we're going to add the image that uh, we looked at before. So that's added. And that's our starting position for all the tests that we're going to do today. Before we start our first test, let's just make sure that settings are correct here. So temperature is zero, which is great. This is what we want because we want it to be as much repeatable as possible. Uh, so that will leave the default. And yeah, they already by default choose that newest three and a half sonnet model. So that's what we want. Okay, so let's run this first test. Running. And the response is that the conditions are not met as expected. Here are the mismatches. In the activity date range section, the word include is not highlighted with blue. So this is great because we, we made that mistake on purpose. So it correctly noticed that uh, the wrong word is highlighted. 
However, it seems like it's screw up with the second one. There is no question mark icon next to the activity date range text. The question mark icon appears next to the select activity date range. Um, yeah, so we know that's not correct because um, it's basically the other way around. So it didn't didn't notice it correctly, it did it the other way around. Okay, so let's run this again and let's run it a few times and see if the results will be any different. So every time I do this run, it's just running from the beginning. Um, it seems like it's exactly the same situation here. So second time, it noticed the same thing. Let's run it again and see what happens. Uh, it seems like every time is the same. So this is interesting. This is very different from what I observe in, with the other models like GPT-4 or Phi-3 by Microsoft. Those other ones were all over the place and most of them actually weren't even able to figure out this, that the include was not highlighted. So this looks better. First of all, it seems like it noticed uh, the thing that other models had problems with, but it's incorrectly showing the second one all the time. However, the interesting thing is that it's, it makes the same mistake all the time, which is actually good for testing because the worst thing that we don't want to have is the kind of flicky tests that pass sometimes, sometimes they, they don't pass. So it's actually better to see it right away that it's making the same mistake over and over again, because this can tell us that we shouldn't be testing that particular thing. Let's try to do some changes now in the conditions that we, uh, that we listed here, just to make sure that it can correctly detect uh, some other issues that we're going to introduce here on purpose. So the first condition that we have here is that at the top right, IRM organizations text is displayed prominently. So it was there and uh, it was passing the test, obviously. So now we're going to change it to IRM organization without the S at the end. And let's try to run the test now and see what results we're going to get from this. Ah, look, it's notice it. At the top left, the text display prominently is IRM organizations, not IRM organization as specifying the conditions. So it can actually notice and we keep continuing with those other things here. Let's run it again a few times just to see if we get inconsistent results. And yes, again, notice the same thing. Let's run it maybe two or three more times just to make sure. Yeah, it seems like it can recognize this correctly. Uh, some another mistake that we introduced on purpose. So that is pretty interesting. Uh, every time the same results consistently, very good. Let's try something else. So we will change this at the top left, RM organizations, uh, text is displayed prominently. So that's correct. But instead of displayed prominently, we'll just write it is displayed in small font. So that should fail because uh, as we can see again here in the top left, the IRM organizations is pretty big. It's not a small font. So this should fail and it should notice that. Let's try it. So we're running the test and it says at the top left, IRM organization is displayed in large font, not a small font as specifying the condition. So again, it noticed that correctly and this is working really well. Let's try two more times just to make sure that we're getting the same results again. Uh, yes, notice that again. That's usually a good idea to run the same test a few times just to make sure that you're getting consistent results. Uh, yeah, every time the same results. Awesome. So it looks like it's keep having problem with that activity date range versus select activity date range. I um, have to agree, I have to admit that it is a little bit tricky because it's similar sentence, just one word difference. So for now, maybe let's remove those two conditions at the bottom. We know already that it's unable to do that. So let's remove those conditions at the bottom here. And let's try to see how it's gonna work now. The text is displayed. Let's put it back to prominently. So this, got, this time it should um, actually pass the test. Let's see if that's gonna work. Oh yeah, so the include is actually, we did that mistake on purpose. So let's actually fix it and see how that's going to react. In activity today, the word, uh, we will put exclude. The word exclude is highlighted with blue color. Okay, so this test should pass now. Test pass. Perfect. 
Uh, let's try it a few more times just to see that it really works. Okay, looks really good. This is extremely encouraging because this is the first time I'm getting this kind of consistent and really good results. And I've been testing different uh, vision capabilities of different models for the last few months. And this is literally the first time when I feel like this is working really well. So um, let's try a few other tests and see how that's going to work. Let's add some more conditions to this and see how it's going to behave. Okay, so looking back, uh, back at our screenshot here, what else can we add? Let's say there is this search form uh, at the top in the middle of the page. So let's add this condition and ask it to, uh, yeah, and ask it to check for that search form. So at the beginning, we'll do it incorrectly. So the condition will be that there is a search form at the bottom of the page. So let's try that and see how that's going to work. So first I will remove those other conditions. Let's just focus on one at a time. So there, there is a search form at the bottom of the page. Okay, so let's run this. And it should be incorrect. The condition is not met. The screenshot shows a search, but at the top of the page, not at the bottom as specifying the condition. The search form is located in the upper right corner of the interface with the placeholder text search, people in session fonts and securities. So looking back at the picture, uh, we can see that it got it to some degree correctly because it says the search form is located in the upper right corner. Oh, okay. So it found actually that other search uh, at the top, right? Instead of the one in the middle that I was thinking about. Interesting. Okay, so it's still correct. Uh, I didn't notice it. But let's try something else maybe with that uh, export button on the right side here. So let's uh, let's try to do one test with this, with the export button. We will go back to our workbench and we'll put this export button. So there is a uh, there is an export button on the left. So that should fail again because the button is on the right side. The condition is not met. There is an export button, but it's located on the right side of the screen. Uh, as we can see here. Okay, so let's fix this. And there is a button on the right. And now the test should pass. Yes, worked. I think we can end our testing here. The results are amazing compared to all the other available models right now. It made really only that one mistake when it was this tricky situation um, that I described in the condition. But everything else was really done perfectly. And also importantly, the one mistake that it was making, it was making every time. This way, when you're designing the tests, when you're trying to use it for web UI automation, you can actually right away see that it's a problem with this particular element, or you can just remove it from the test or do it the more standard way. But it seems like for all the other things, uh, you can keep testing it and trying what works. And you can really automate web UI testing with this model Seems like Antrophing did a really good job and it's very encouraging to see that it works much better than all the previous models. And this also gives me hope that the future models will be even better at this kind of web UI testing. And maybe at some point with another year or two, we're going to have a model that will be just able to perfectly recognize all those elements on the page and we can use it for production tests. Thanks a lot for watching. And let me know in the comments what do you think about those kind of tests and whether you're planning to use this new model uh, for this kind of scenarios. See you next time.